Price elasticity of demand or PD. This is one of the topics that business studies students and economic students tend to find more difficult to understand. So let's break it down and have a look at the definition. Okay, price elasticity of demand is defined as the responsiveness of a change in the quantity demanded of a good or service to a change in price. Now the key word here is this word responsiveness. How responsive is the change in the quantity demanded if you adjust the price of a product or service? Let's take a look at a very simple diagram that I've created here. So we've got our products, our fruits and veggies, you can see that. Now if I was to increase the price by 10%, what would you expect to happen for the level of demand of the product? I'm hoping you think it's going to fall. So now I'm going to add in three different areas of circles. Each of these circles, as you can see, is a number of customers making a purchase. Now, let's just assume that if we increase the price by 10%, as you can see down here, and we only lost 5% of our customers, it's not bad for the business, that's pretty good. We've increased our price by 10%, but we've only lost 5% of our customers. On the other hand, if we increased our price by 10%, but we lost 10% of our customers, well, we're stuck back to the same point we were before. In a more worse situation, though, if we were to increase our price by 10% when we lost 15% of our customers, we we're actually going backwards, we we're losing more customers. And what that is basically doing is looking at the elasticity. This line here that I've got here, imagine it being an elastic band being stretched. That is measuring the elasticity. So in simple terms, the longer this line, the more elastic the product is, the more responsive the product is to a change in price. The, low, the smaller or the shorter this line is, the less responsive, so the more inelastic the product is. Now, okay, you're probably thinking that's a little bit more confusing. So let's try and take this into business studies and look at what you've got to do for your exam. Firstly, you will need to learn this formula, the price elasticity of demand formula, PED. Now, notice you've got two steps to this formula. You actually have to first calculate the percentage change in quantity demanded and the percentage change in the actual price. That means you need to do the formula, the change divided by the original times 100. You have to do those stages first. It's very unlikely you'll be given it on a plate if you have to calculate it. But let's take a really simple question and just put the numbers together so you can see where we're going with this. So, a baker increases the price of her loaf by 17%, and demand then falls by 5%. Is the product, or the price, basically elastic? So if we just put these numbers into the formula, the percentage change in the quantity demanded is 5%. We've lost 5%, minus 5. And the percentage change in price is 17%. So if we do minus 5 divided by 17, and you get your calculator out and do that, hopefully you'll find the answer is 0 0.2, or shall I say minus 0 0.2. Now, we need to ignore the minus. We can just drop the minus and ignore that. And then you've got to think, what does that number mean? Well, I'm going to tell you now. This is another part you've got to learn. If the answer you've got is greater than 1, the product is said to be elastic. What that means is that if we were to increase the price by 5%, for example, a smaller arrow there, then the gr we would have a greater drop in the level of demand. So there may be, let's say, 10% or 20%. So a 5% increase would lose 20% of our customers. That's not very good for a business. Not in that case that I'm suggesting there. But on the other hand, if the answer you got was less than 1, then it's an inelastic demand. So in our example here, this means that if we were to increase our price by, let's say, 20%, we may only lose 10% of our customers. That's quite good. Now, what you've got to remember is the key words here. An elastic product is more responsive to a change of price, where an inelastic product is less responsive to a change in price. That's all we have to remember, nice and simple. More responsive to a change in price for an elastic product less responsive to change in price for an inelastic product. Simple as that. Okay, let's take a look at a more complex example. The price of polar mints falls from 25p to 20p, leading to an increase in the quantity demanded from 200 to 220 units. Okay, let's tackle this like an exam question. The first thing we must do is write out the formula. So we've got our PD, there's a percentage change in quantity demanded, divided by the percentage change in price. And now, let's calculate it. So as you can see, let's do our quantity demanded. It's 200 divided, so minus 220 to find our change. So there's our 20. Divided by our original, which is 200, times it by 100, 10%. Now let's do the same for price. 
25p minus 20 gives us a 5p change. Divide it by our original price of 25p times 100 and we get 20%. So now we do 10 divided by 20 and we find our answer is 0.5 or minus 0.5. Remember, ignore the minus. So that means because it's less than 1, the product is inelastic. And if you think about the numbers looking at that there, you can see it's less responsive. So the price can go down, but actually demand goes up by a lesser amount. And there you go, there's an example of how it's done. Okay, so now just to test your understanding, you probably want to pause the slides and actually have a look at answering some of these questions. Fairly straightforward. Be a good time now to pause the video and complete these questions for me. Okay, I'm hoping that you've answered those questions and found them okay. Good way to see if you got the answers correct is to discuss them with the partner. If you've got any mistakes, then obviously you can work your way through them and hopefully you'll find out where you've gone wrong. Don't forget though, you can find more help, more advice on the worksheets that we have below in this video. Or also, you can find them on our Twitter page, at Be The Business Bee. Okay, now what to get us to think about what the impact of a change in price will have on sales revenue for a company. A really good way to get some analysis into our answer. So let's start with an elastic product. So we've got an answer greater than one. It's more responsive. So if we increase the price, what will happen to our sales revenue? So we increase the price, what do you think is going to happen? Will it go up, will it go down, or will it stay the same? Hopefully, you realise that sales revenue will fall. Because let's think about this logically. If it's an elastic product, if we increase the price of the product by, say, 10%, we're going to lose maybe 20% of our customers, so we'll actually be worse off. Let's look at the other side of an elastic product. If we decrease the price, what's going to happen? Well, sales revenues will increase, because think about it the other way around. If we take our price down by 10%, we might then get 20% more customers, so we'll actually make more money. Let's imagine that the PED is exactly one. It's exactly parity. It's neither elastic nor inelastic. What do you think is going to happen if we increase the price? Well, I'm guessing you thought nothing happens. Well done. Sales revenue will stay exactly the same. Because if we increase it by 10%, we'll actually see that demand will fall by 10%. Exactly the same. So what do you think is going to happen if we decrease the price? Exactly the same. Nothing will happen. Because if we decrease our price by 10%, we'll increase our sales base by 10%. So, okay, let's look at an inelastic product, one that's less responsive. If we increase our price, what's going to happen to our sales revenue? Well, hopefully you've worked out we'll make more money. Because if we increase our price by 10%, then we'll actually only maybe lose 5% of our customers, meaning we make more money. So what will happen if we lower the price of an inelastic product? Well, hopefully you've worked out the sales revenue will start to fall. Because... What we tend to do there, we're seeing the exact opposite. We're seeing that if we lower our price by 10%, then because it's less responsive, we'll actually gain maybe 2 or 3% more customers. And that table is really important to try and remember and get it into your head. Don't worry if you don't understand it the first time. Go back through, watch it again, and I'm pretty sure you'll understand it after watching it again. Okay, so let's have a look at what makes a product elastic. I'm hoping that all of you are thinking... Some products are more elastic than others. Some products tend to be able to go up in price and people still pay it. That's a common one. Necessity. How much do we need the product? Bread, milk, petrol. We need it. It's a necessity. We have to have it. Habit. Are you addicted to it? Alcohol, cigarettes, chocolate. You can put the price of those up. And demand only falls by a lesser amount. The availability of substitutes, and what we mean by that is rival products, alternative products. If I increase my price, and there's lots of other alternatives, the customer may swap. If they haven't got many options to swap, then what you'll tend to find is that the customers stay loyal, and I'll pay the price. Brand loyalty, adding value. Is the customer loyal to a brand? A brand itself can make a product inelastic. Remember, that means it's less responsive to a change in price. That is brilliant for a brand. They can increase the price and they'll only see a small drop off of customers. And of course, lastly, but not leastly, is how much do you spend of your income on a product? If you don't spend a great amount of your income on a product, then you're going to be less likely to change if the price is to increase. 
Whereas if it's actually quite a large percentage of your income, then you're more likely to change your shopping habits because you feel the effects more of an increase in price. And of course, you could look at the income of consumers. However, that's a little bit more economically, and maybe we don't need to go too detailed to that one. Okay, right, here's some questions to test your understanding. Maybe you want to pause the slides now and have a go at these. Here's question three and question four. They're quite simple as well. Again, maybe you want to pause the slides. It would probably be a good idea to check your answers to the partner. Again, review them. If you get stuck, watch the slides back through again or download some of our worksheets below, which will help you to solve any problems hopefully you're still having with this topic. Okay, you now should hopefully, having completed this lesson, be able to calculate and assess price elasticity of demand. Remember, you need to know the formula, you need to be able to calculate it, and you need to be able to explain it. Don't be afraid to link the knowledge. That is where the higher order skills are going to come from in your exam. Hopefully, you're enjoying Be The Business Bee, and you're able to give us a follow on Twitter, and also give a like on our YouTube channel. Remember, if you get stuck, like we did with this topic here, feel free to tweet me or ask any questions, and hopefully I'll be able to cover the topic in the future. Don't forget, you can download any of our PD worksheets and question sheets from the links in the YouTube video description area below, and hopefully help these to improve your understanding of the topic. Please feel free to share the resources, because that's what the Be The Business Beat is all about. Hopefully, you've improved your knowledge of PED.